I suppose there are four key factors. Um, firstly, the market. The world is changing fast and of course businesses of all sizes are becoming increasingly international. Secondly, the regulators. Uh, regulators are focused on ensuring greater levels of global, global consistency and effective competition. And of course in the background there's a natural wish to prevent a further economic meltdown by improving early warning systems through better reporting. Um, clients, well, <laughs> where, would we be, where would we be without clients? Clients, they are demanding international consistency in services they receive and therefore their providers have to have proper training and systems and of course talented people. Uh, they also want, this is the clients, they also want a wider choice of, of suppliers so there is competition and this has an impact on quality, innovation and pricing. And fourthly, investors. Well investors demand reporting and services which are internationally consistent, trusted and add value. And they also want a competitive market and a choice of suppliers. And we're starting to see the impact of investors through, um, for example, recent letters in the Financial Times. Well, interestingly, the accounting world today is dominated by networks. People think that, for example, the big four are four major organisations. Well, they are, but what's hidden within that is that PwC, for example, is actually 150 businesses. The issue here is that all networks are inherently inconsistent, as they're not one organisation. Uh, there's a range of owners, and of course those owners will inevitably have conflicting strategies. So let's just look at three types of organisation that operate in the accounting and auditing world. Firstly, the big four. Well, they have good consistency because they have very tough franchise rules. They're oligopoly, however, and that's resented by clients and regulators. They're growing fast, they're successful businesses. For example, in the last five years, they've doubled. But it's worthwhile pointing out that audit is less than 45% of their total revenues. And the big growth that's coming through now is in consulting. They do also, fortunately for them, benefit from, from substantial referrals. For example, over 50% of their total revenue is estimated to come from internal referrals. Two further categories. The next six. Well, these are much smaller. In fact, in total, they amount to less than 20% of the big four. They're trying to achieve consistency, but that's hampered by ownership structures. And that's a bit of an issue, but they're trying to get there. They have limited experience of major PIEs, and their referrals within themselves are reputed to be less than 10%. And then there's one other sort of structure, the integrated partnership. And there's actually only one of those, which is called Mazars. Mazars is working hard to ensure consistency, and of course it's easier if it's got one ownership structure. It has substantial experience of PIEs, public interest entities, via its core French joint audits. And it's achieving critical mass worldwide and increasingly services PI servicing PIEs internationally. Well, I think there are going to be three big disruptors, actually. Firstly, there's the European Union. Now, the European Union wants to encourage competition, audit quality and governance through well, it's decided through a stricter tendering process. And of course, as part of that, it's encouraging joint audit, both as a learning process and as an end in itself. China? Well, China wants Chinese practices to work with state-owned enterprises, SOEs, in China and as they grow internationally. It dislikes the American-dominated Big Four controlling audit in China and worldwide. So it has stated that it is going to build three major international practices. And the third disruptor are the investors, because they're starting to demand major PIEs consider mid-tier firms. But it's worthwhile mentioning that they're also challenging those mid-tier firms to have the capacity to deliver.
Well, interestingly, within 10 years, we're not going to be just the old big four. We're going to have seven or eight big firms. That's the existing four, plus the three from China that they've announced, and therefore it will happen, plus perhaps one other. Now, what are the criteria for getting into those extra firms? There are really four criteria. Firstly, there has to be critical mass in each major economy. Secondly, there has to be a coverage in at least 70 other countries, and you're going to have to be in the top 10 in China. Thirdly, you're going to have to have consistency in every location. And fourthly, you must have major PIE clients, uh, perhaps via joint audit. Now, once those criteria are satisfied, then the organisations that satisfy them will see a sudden, sustainable and substantial growth in fees, both in their domestic markets and through international referrals. However, the big four, well, what's going to happen to them? Well, they're going to be challenged. They're going to be challenged internally as they focus on consulting. They're going to be challenged by regulators who wish for more competition. And thirdly, they're going to be challenged by investors who are going to demand choice and better service. So the mid-tier firms are going to grow. They're going to grow provided that they can impose consistency. And of course, there's a bit of an issue there because of their diverse ownership structure. And there's a bit of an issue around their lack of PIE experience. The big beneficiary of these recent changes, whether from the EU, from China, or, or from pressure from investors, will actually be an organization called Mazars because of their integrated partnership and existing substantial experience of PIEs. Well, the culture of the firm of the future that's going to succeed is, of course, going to depend upon its people. And any firm that's going to be one of the great ones is going to have to make certain it recruits the right people, trains them, and then retains them. The other important thing to mention is that there will be no dominant culture. For example, there won't be a culture from the US which dominates the other countries, or from China, or from France, or from Germany, or from the UK, or from anywhere. There will be a firm culture that will apply internationally.